anybody has been to many trials and, and they know what the judge has to do to judge the dogs he he knows he's hard pressed to make these decisions so most of are pretty good sports about it. it's not an exact science it's not like mathematics it's a judgment call it's subjected to a certain extent it's based on your life's experience watching dogs that's that's really what it comes down to and and of course then to be a kc licensed trial judge you have to know the rules of the akc but really the bottom line is how many years have you watched good dogs run if you haven't had good quality dogs you can't know good quality dogs you have to have owned some and had experience watching others run long maybe your friends watching dogs run is the bottom line that's how you learn to do it spending hours and hours and hours hundreds of hours in the woods probably the brush piles weed fields and fence rows of the central kentucky wildlife area are excellent rabbit habitat and an ideal place to separate the dogs from the pups but the same cover which hides rabbits from hounds can hide hounds from judges. If you can see enough of the chase, most experienced dogmen can make a right decision. The worryment is, it's, can you get to see enough of it? Can you stay up with them? Can you get through the cover? Can you watch enough of it so you can make an, a real evaluation of a dog? It, it's very difficult sometimes because they're running in a strange place, a, a very difficult place to get through to follow dogs, and maybe the, the rabbit they're running is small. Or, so you worry about seeing enough to make a really honest evaluation. That's the biggest worry. You think the judges are worried? How about down here where the rabbit meets the road? Don't wag so much. There he went. There he went. I saw white tail, boys. He went this way. Just watch the general flow of the pack and how the dogs stay together and you just watch some dogs that seem to have a, a very good direction when they when they make when they claim the scent they, they make a move real steady straight move and and every time they tongue they seem to be making steady straight progress where the dogs that are more inaccurate seem to maybe they'll run around other dogs or they'll jump on top of the dogs or they just act over aggressive and uh, run around with their heads up in the air uh, they they act uh, maybe high strung uh, uh, they watch other dogs when when there's a was a loss of scent and dogs are are trying to recover the scent we call that check <laughs> Field trial. Field trial. Pick them up. Pick them up. Field trial. That's the end of it. <laughs> Very dramatic moment. <laughs> Judges' deliberations are carried out in quiet, inconspicuous places, if such places can be said to exist at field trials, and all around them the congenial babble and bedlam continue. Informal gatherings of beagles and beagle owners form for some tail swapping. Some dogs get to stretch their legs, whether they want to or not, and some may take to the dance floor. Rex Wallace and uh, Wayne Thompson and myself uh, <laughs> went to ha and had a big race up on the edge of Cumberland Mountain, above Cookville, Tennessee late one afternoon and uh, the dogs was all running a rabbit and uh, we decided to uh, catch the dogs it's nearly dark so we could go in and uh, went down to a swamp right to the edge of where we was running and uh, uh, run into a rattlesnake he went to rattling and uh, Wayne and Rex killed it and it had about a half-grown rabbit, half swallowed. And uh, the dogs come right on around. And uh, we found out it's after the same rabbit that the, they, uh, the snake had, had half swallowed. They killed uh, the snake, and the dogs come right on up, and all of them run off. But one old, one old sorry dog we had, and uh, and he grabbed the snake after he killed and shook it around a little. And, they brought the snake on out and put him in the deep freeze at Wayne Thompson so to uh, uh, give somebody to make a hat band out of. First place hound, field champion, Canoe Creek Burt, Thurman Mason, 
Beersheba, Tennessee, finished today. Now, Canoe Creek Burke is not without his faults, but he hunts consistently well enough to have earned the title field trial champion. What are the dues he's paid to reach this point? Well, long rides in a kennel over thousands of highway miles in several states, many weekends away from home and his country music, up early to press through the milling packs of dogs with strange faces and strange smells, and the pressure to perform, always the pressure to bring home the trophy and the points. He has placed first place in uh, Illinois. He placed first place in uh, Missouri. Placed first place in uh, Alabama. He has two third place wins in Georgia and several wins in Tennessee. Today may have been Burke's final competition. As the winner of the 13-inch male class, he has acquired more than the number of points and first place finishes he is required to have in order to carry the highly prized title of field trial champion. To be a champion, you have to win three of these license trials. Three in a in a. And have 120 points. Yeah. You, you get a win on a trial like here. There's such big classes. You get a tremendous amount of points, right right all at once. You know, like the winner of the big bitch class yesterday got 61 points. Just. And the points, the number of points that you get are related to the number of dogs that right. you compete against. If you win against. the trial, you get a point for every dog, every starter. That means every dog you competed against. And if you, you, you get second, you get a half a point for every dog, every starter. And third is a third of the point, and the fourth is a fourth of the point. So this, this really is a big deal, then. Uh, yeah, you win this trial, you get one walking number of points. <laughs> like a little female day, I think there's 90-something starters, you know, she's yeah. got 90-something points. She's right there. Yeah. Well, she, really, now, any old win will finish her. If she wins a class of t 10 and another class of 20, why, well, she's... She done. She's done. Oh. Isn't that something? I haven't ever judged a small male with his particular qualities, uh, patience and line control, especially on very tough scent. Uh, I've judged some fine dogs that have maybe a little bit different qualities he had, but uh, he, he's one of the he's one of the the top three dogs that I've ever put a license win on. The dogs this dog's strong point is that when when the rabbit is tough to run when the scent is very weak and on bare ground where a dog has to really get put his nose right on the rabbit scent, this dog shines. He's, he's, he has a lot of patience. He can just stay on faint scent, and he's got a lot of brains because then he, he can piece it all together and make the track move forward when, when other dogs can't smell it or have no patience to stay with it. This is the dog's strong point. But he's a, he's a, he's a very honest mouth dog. Every time he tongues, he's moving rabbit. Oh, he'd be he'd be a pleasure to hunt in any pack. He, yeah. he what we call an anchor hound. When there's a lot of tough check work to be done, uh, he'd be the one there that would recover bad losses and and would be able to handle faint scenting conditions. That's the type of dog he is. That's once in a lifetime you get a field champion. And he's right about that. Is that right? It's, oh, yeah. it's really. There's very few field champions in the United States. Gun dogs. I'll be done. So you could go another ten years without getting one. I'm probably never get another one. Is that right? It would almost right. impossible to buy. A price on that dog would be astronomical. I mean, we're talking thousands of dollars. And today, it's almost impossible. I mean, unless a man is very, very wealthy uh, and can find the dog that a man is willing to sell, uh, there's some, some dogs won't, a man won't sell at any price. Would you sell that dog right there? I wouldn't want to. Not even he's, if... he's part of the family. Is he? Is he? Does, does he? does he sit in your lap in the evenings when it gets cold outside? <laughs> <laughs> well, he he eats the best of food and listens to country music anytime he likes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't ride up in the cab with you, though. No, he has his own radio with the kennel. And seriously, I have music in my kennel. A thoroughbred owner would retire a champion to stud and wait for the checks to roll in. This particular champion can look forward to a more leisurely retirement whether he'll look forward to a leisurely retirement with the same enthusiasm as a life at stud, we'll never know. <laughs>